it's Peter from Cars and Guitars, another how-to video converting your Fox body Mustang from a 4-lug to a 5-lug configuration. If you own a 1982 to 1993 Ford Mustang that comes with a 4-lug set up all the way around, front disc, rear drum brakes, and like to convert it to a 5-lug for a few grand in a weekend of work, you can turn that into a beautiful braking setup, 4-wheel disc all the way around, nice braking powerhouse. With a little research and a little planning, you can get rid of that heavy K-member up front, shocks and springs, and that messy rack and pinion setup. Save yourself about 150 pounds in the process. Shave that right off the front end. First thing to do is to remove the front suspension by unbolting the K-member and the struts from the top of the shock towers. You should be able to pull that front end right out of there, and you'll have a nice clean slate to start with. I just happen to be at this point in this part of this restoration of this custom 85 project. When this customer gave me the car he already purchased the front end set from QA1 Motorsports. Comes with the K-member, coilover shocks, control arms, and all the linkages and I have to say it is a beautiful setup. I've spoken several times with the engineering staff and the tech support over at QA1 and uh, they are absolutely fantastic. For the brake system, I chose a stainless steel brakes corporation kit for this. It comes with the five lug spindles. I went with the 13 inch rotors with the drilled and slotted upgrade. Beautiful dual piston calipers, hardware, and hoses. Absolutely fantastic kit. You can see the parts there and the uh, stainless steel brake corporation, their technical support. Those people are also fantastic to deal with. This is the tubular member from QA1 Motorsports ready to bolt in. Very simple. All the bolt holes line up. You just hold it up, use the old bolts, and it bolts right in. It's a beautiful setup, extremely light, and uh, very, very clean. Very, very nice to work with. For the rack and pinion unit, I chose the Flaming River Manual 4 turn lock to lock chrome plated unit. It's a beautiful unit. I'm putting one of these in my 427 Cobra, and I really like their product. If you are going to buy the Flaming River unit, I highly recommend you purchase it as a kit. It comes with the bushings and the tie rod ends. This is important because the threads on the Flaming River unit are not stock threads. So if you go to the store and buy tie rod ends for this uh, unit, it's not going to match up with the thread. You'll have to call Flaming River and get the right tie rod ends. Also remember, although I'm using a 1985 rack, I need tie rod ends for 1994 spindles. Very critical to remember at this step of the process. Also another critical point to remember, although this is a 1985 QA1 front suspension kit, you must order it with the 1994-1995 control arms. You're using a 1994-95 spindle, and if you do not order it with the right control arms, it'll have the wrong ball joints on there and you'll have to end up sending them back. As an option from QA1, you can purchase these caster camera plates for the top of the shock towers, which give you multiple, multiple adjustment points, which is highly unnecessary because there's really not that much room in the shock tower to make the adjustments that these units are capable of. So it's not worth purchasing if you really don't need it. The QA1 kit comes with these spherical rod and bearings that are threaded. They screw in and out of the control arms, allowing you to get the wheel in the center of the wheel opening comes with a variety of spacers and it's just a matter of trial and error trying to get the spacer just right in the right location to get the tire or to get the wheel right in the middle of the opening. This is a dual piston caliper from Stainless Steel Brakes Corporation. Absolutely beautiful aluminum caliper. Very easy to put together. I also got the 13 inch rotor drilled and vented, slotted. Absolutely beautiful setup. I would highly recommend buying their products. Just a little gold there, the customer wanted a little accent color on the braking components. Once it's all together with an 18 inch wheel, it looks beautiful. A lot of stopping power in that 13 inch rotor, dual piston caliper, and those coil over struts are fantastic. Beautifully machined, well built. Again, highly recommend the QA1 and the stainless steel brake components. Moving to the rear end, you can see the four lug axles with the drum brakes, not very attractive. Also, it's going to be a seven and a half inch rear end, which is not very robust. There's a measurement that's going to be very important. 
the rear axle you pull out is going to be out about 58 and a half inches lug to lug. That's going to be very important to remember when you go and get a new axle. Uh, keep in track of how long that axle is. You don't want to have buy an axle you end up have to end up cutting down. I'm putting a pretty powerful motor in this vehicle, and I wanted to upgrade to an 8.8 .8 inch axle. This particular one came out of a 1994 Cobra. 1994 axle will come with all the disc brakes set up already on it, so it'll make your change to five lug a lot easier. You can find one at a local junkyard if you can, but I got this one from MPS Auto Salvage. They advertise on eBay, and they are absolutely fantastic to deal with. Very easy, PayPal, shipped it on a pallet. Absolutely no problems getting it shipped to my shop. And uh, it came, it was in beautiful shape. Came with everything you'd need to bolt it right into your, your uh, conversion project. Since this came out of a 1994 Cobra, it is 60 and a half inches hub to hub. Two inches longer than the axle I took out. So you either have to have this cut down or when by the wheels, have an additional inch backspace on the wheels to compensate for those additional two inches. You want to save all of the brake lines off of the axle, clean them up and put them back on nice and clean. And the good thing about purchasing the Cobra axle is it comes with the one inch roll bar instead of the uh, half inch that will be on your Mustang, the one you took out. So you get a beefier roll bar when you upgrade to a Cobra axle. These are some parts that are going to be left over, springs, shocks that you're not going to be using, control arms if you already have them, and of course the four lug rotors that came with the axle. You're not going to need those, maybe you can sell those to somebody. And of course, the smaller sway bar that came off of the original axle. Once you get the axle clean, painted, and I powder coated the rear cover there, it's a direct bolt in. It'll fit right into control arms, direct swap. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. Springs, everything lines up. It's a very, very easy swap. Again, going with the Stainless Steel Brake Corporation, this time it's going to be a 12 inch rotor with uh, a single piston caliper. They only make the standard cast calipers for the rear end. You need nothing fancy there, so it's a single piston caliper. All the components from Stainless Steel Brakes are top notch. The calipers come with the parking brake setup, and again, direct bolt in, absolutely no problems whatsoever. The only problem I ran into is that since this axle is two inches longer, the brackets are a little further out and the lateral strut is about an inch closer to the shock, too close to cause some interference. That's just a matter of putting a bushing on the inside of that strut, push it away from the shock a little bit and after I got that done, no problem. Here's the finished setup. 12 inch rotor with the single piston caliper, again a little gold in there for color, 18 inch wheel looks a lot nicer than the drum brake that comes right from the factory. So to sum it all up at some points to remember, you're going to need some front spindles. 1994-95 front spindles will be set up for the disc brake configuration. Those will come in the kit from Stainless Steel Brakes Corporation. It will come all as one set. I used the QA1 Motorsports kit for the front K member and all of the control arms. I went with the Flaming River Rack and Pinion, manual rack for turn lock to lock. I like their products, that's why I went with that. You're also going to need an, an axle. I got the 8.8 .8 inch 1994 95er axle set up for disc brakes. And again, I got that from MPS Auto Salvage. Very easy to find online or on eBay. Great people to deal with. All in all, it's going to cost you about $1,400 for this front suspension, $329 for the rack kit. The four wheel disc brake set up from stainless steel brakes is about two grand. And a master cylinder you're going to need, that's only about 60 bucks. This is Peter from Cars and Guitars. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email.